Attack Power here with Division 2 Finals for Season 10 of the Steel Division 2 League. Let's dive right in. Alrighty, folks, so we're in Game 1 here on Ciano, and on the right in the red, we have Colonel Koenig playing 3rd US Armored on Balanced Income. And on the left in the blue, we have Sir Daniels playing 2nd Blinde also on Balanced Income. So shocking to see balanced income. Uh, other than me, it's not very popular, uh, generally speaking. So this is very interesting to see both players take this. Uh, Siano, another interesting choice of a map. I, I don't mind this map as terrain. Uh, the flag placement is awful. This red player really has to like work hard just to like get in here, and then has to work really hard to capture flags. While blue obviously just needs to move the la the 50 line just a little bit to capture two flags quite easily. So I'm really not a, a fan of the balance of the map placement but i i do actually like the map uh the mix of 2k stuff down here to work with in this open area compared to the 1500 meter 1000 meter range tight stuff here in the town makes for some interesting fighting uh with the divisional choices um third armored versus second blinde is definitely interesting of course it's a lot of sherman spam with third armor having the significantly better sherman spam uh because of their 76 mil shermans and the jumbo wumbos uh obviously superior both players going to be struggling on the infantry front but i think third has I want to say third has slightly better infantry only because of the presence of lots of bazookas, not necessarily because the infantry is actually better infantry per se, but their AT loadout is a lot more helpful. It looks like uh, Colonel Kernan going for a pretty big push up north uh, with his faster M8s and stuff, looking to probably grab some early ground. I can't really say what the flamethrowers too would suggest he's going to push for this flag, which is highly advisable for red because there's not many flags to capture that are close. On the other hand, uh, Sir Daniel's not defending it very hard, although he definitely has a... a yeah, a, a somewhat sizable group here, a double 57 cannon coming in there. Uh, down south, we see a very big force down here to fill in all this southern stuff. So it looks like uh, Colonel Koenig planning to push into the, the town from the south and not from the center. We usually see people rush this center road. So that's definitely interesting. Sir Daniel's doing the same thing, actually. Very, very interesting. So both players happen to be pushing for very similar parts of the map. Uh, usually this, it, it, the fight starts in here kind of thing. Both players kind of rush this little center flag because it's very easy to blue to get into this spot. Um, so you know, it tends to be easy to do that, but it doesn't look like he's going to make any effort to do that. So it should be very, very interesting. And if you guys enjoy this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content, and consider checking out that Patreon down below. Here we go. So no early airplanes, no recon or anything like that. We do see the M8s are vetted up quite high here. Double star for Sir Daniels. The M8s on this side are not as vetted, but we do have a leader. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, leader uh, M8. I was about to say Sherman. I know it's not Sherman. Uh, leader M8 there. So that's definitely helping the cause. Yeah, the machine gun's not going in. Uh, M7 gun's really not going in either. Neither of the rifles. So it looks like Koenig's kind of giving up this flag. He would be, he doesn't know it, but he would be safe to get in before this M10 gets there. Now, the French M10s do not have the APCR shells. On the other hand, the American M10s do. They have the 2K range APCR shells. That's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, Sir Daniel's deploying really far back to try to avoid this M8 aiming down the road here. Uh, it should get the first pop off on this, this uh, Stuart here. Although it hasn't fired yet, so I have to assume it doesn't have line of sight because it does have 250 meter range. There we go. Now, now it's in line of sight. Yeah, the line to sight can always be a little funky. Just remember that. Up north, uh, kind of getting into position, the uh, Pioneers are going to be a bit of an issue. They're a solid flamer squad. Not crazy good, but... And Koenig did get in now with his flamethrower, so solid grab there. But the Sappers and Pioneers getting in for uh, Sir Daniels here. Both players setting up. No player really getting any, like, distinct kills or anything here at the beginning flamethrower is moving in versus the sappers if he can double team it would be fine he is actually moving out of range pioneers at three stars are going to be an issue yeah, they didn't even take damage the m20 goes down m20 basically just for the 50 cal uh armored rifles getting if they move forward like two buildings they'll they'll capture that flag remember we're on mirrored balanced income here and the weird thing is i would not define either of these divisions as balanced divisions um Obviously, any division can be played anyway, but there's certainly a tendency, a leaning for some divisions. Not everyone, but some divisions really can like lean towards something. And second Blinde especially, I only really see it set to aggressive incomes. Um, actually, Colonel Koenig is usually the one who is the famous second Blinde player. So it is funny to see Sir Daniels playing his, uh, playing Koenig's kind of classic division. 
Pioneers finally getting broken down. The, the grenade should kill them. Yep, down they go. Sappers still have a grenade, though. We see two more uh, Voltigeers moving in. Voltigeers? I'm, I'm sorry. My French is probably worse than my... Probably worse than anything, actually. French is rough. Beautiful language. Really hard for not French people to say. At least in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. Armored rifles versus sappers, but sappers are in the cover there. So they will shred. They also have a machine gun. No, they don't. I lied. Apologies. No machine gun. But the cover difference is all it requires. And now there's half tracks moving in as well. It's really going to come down to how these players use their light armor. You know, who can use the half tracks more effectively? Grenade does get off from the engineers, kills those pioneers. So nice kill there. Needs to take out those solid CQC infantry. With uh, Sir Dennis bringing the Manet, that means he doesn't have nearly as many. Little Gears, a, a solid infantry squad. These are the, like the better ones because they have the double MG. You can see here the double MG. So, uh, Sir Daniel's grabbing this southern flag. Uh, Sapper's hopping in and out here. Smoke going down to stop the uh, half track from firing. Means the Sapper's are going to have to work a little bit harder here to get the flamethrowers. Is he ground attacking? What's going on here? Yeah, he is. So he ground attacked the building so that they'll throw their grenades over the, the uh, smoke. Very interesting. Yeah, remember grades, grenades can go over buildings and, and smoke, for example, if you just ground attack around it. So really, really nice micro move there by Sir Daniels. That's really heads up play. Still really surprised they picked this map. In my opinion, it's just kind of a coin flip. Whoever gets the better side really is advantaged heavily. It's the similar to maps such as Slitsk West, uh, Ilomansi. Uh, th these maps are just horrendously weighted to one side because of their because of the structure of the flags. Half track goes down to the Char Sherman here. So pretty early Sherman, leader Sherman. On top of that, we have another Char coming in. We have an M10 and an M4A176, though, so that will definitely help things. Here comes that mortar half trick, but unfortunately for him, it is off target there. M5A1 will have no chance against the M4A1. Flame throwers throw down smoke, but they're right on top of it, which means they still are kind of showing. And now they finally get out of dodge there after throwing another smoke. Koenig under a lot of pressure, of course, because of this easy flag grab. Pioneers not firing. They do have little carbines, but the carbines really aren't putting out that much damage. You do want to put hold fire on so their Thompsons can get involved. 57. Finds the Sherman, kills it, gets rid of some of that veterancy. Another one coming in immediately, but really nice kill there by the 57 mil AT gun. Koenig currently down some flags, 14-10. And we talk about it all the time in these mirror matches. Uh, when you fall behind on tickets, it's really, really rough uh, because, you know, it just, you're behind and you're not going to get any sort of advantage. So we have up north. Fighting continues. M8's moving into position to suppress these infantry with the uh, Sherman dead. Another Sherman's already here, though. Another 50, uh, 57 in now for uh, Sir Daniels into position. Two of those, actually. So, Colonel Kernix has to be very careful with his armor. But here comes the half track. Dropping some, dropping some pain. Leader M8 should be able to put some nice radio on that. Now, the thing is, these... Voltigeers have no AT, so these M8s are pretty safe other than that Sherman. Sherman getting that first shot off immediately because Sherman's doing Sherman things. Do you see a Bofer coming in? I don't think we've seen any air. M3A1 going to go down to the M10 here. Oh, nope, he does see it. 81 will mortar for Sir Daniels on the other side. 57 moving into position, mortar hitting where the infantry were before. Yeah, again, it feels like just a weird choice of divisions. I don't know who picked first or second, but to me, it doesn't really matter. Like, it feels so weird that your reaction to the opponent picking second Blinde is third U.S. Armored, or your reaction to the opponent picking third Armored is second Blinde. Um, you know, the, these divisions stack up strangely because they have a lot of similar, very similar units. Like, these divisions are relatively similar. Low infantry, uh, Sherman spam... Half track spam for their low infantry, lots of half tracks, same sort of AT, um, you know, good 
American bombers and stuff. Like it just, it, you know, mortar half tracks. It to me, the whole thing is very odd. A very odd matchup, and and why you would choose this sort of matchup is kind of, I don't, I don't want to say beyond me, but confusing. I just have a hard time believing, but of all the all the divisions they had left, these were the like, whatever whoever countered was this was their best option. I don't know. Sir Daniels, Colonel, if you're in the comments, please enlighten me. I don't mean to question. You're both better than me, so enlighten me to your thought process here, because I'm confused. But anyway, 81 mil mortars hitting off some of these 57 mil cannons. Both players going after that AT. They know if they can clear out these AT weapons, their Shermans and or M10s or whatever their armor is can run down the opponent. But Koenig's suffering from the, you know, junk flags here, although he has a Jumbo and an M10 now in position. Ooh, 57 in danger, although it spotted something. It spotted the M8. It's not firing, though, for some reason. It's in a glitch. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, nope, finally got into position. Boom, gets shot off. Recon already dead, though. Another M8, but the... Oh, no, it's still alive. Armor rifles being forced off. Engineers get their grenade off. Unfortunately, they go after, like, the basically dead one. Another M8 dead for Sir Daniels. Pioneers find the M1 gun. M3A1, though, putting some fire down on them. Some suppression on them is going to be a big deal. The M1 dies, but that was kind of expected in that situation. The Pioneers already have some suppression, so the armor rifles may have a chance. Nope, they're going to fall back. They're not going to take that fight. Koenig's got a nice little position built here, but he had, only the armored rifles have a bazooka. At it. Otherwise, there's no AT here. Now with the M1 gun dead, there is no AT here. Here comes a P50, uh, P51. Bombs come in. Nice hit on the Pioneers. Doesn't kill them, but they're, they're basically dead at this point. They'll get one flamer shot off. More mortars coming down to force this armored rifle out of position. Up north, things quiet down as mortars trade blows and salvos. M5 half-track does find that armor rifle. Doesn't do much because it's only got the 30 cal instead of the 50 cal, but it doesn't mean it doesn't do doesn't hurt. M10 going after the jumbo wumbo, I think. The M10, the other, the uh, M10 of Koenig fell back there. I'm not sure why, because again, he could just stay behind the jumbo, and unless Sir Daniels purposely, uh, you know targets it it's not gonna sh it's gonna shoot at the other one more m10s coming in but there's really no way to kill this thing bombing it to death is probably the only way he's got to get a side shot or he's got to bomb it to death because there's no, no other way to kill to penetrate this jumbo mortars Doing small damages here and there, but nothing nothing definitive, not killing anything. Koenig does have this flag back. We're now into B phase, so both players getting a bit more income to work with. Double 50 cal on the ridge. Forcing back those infantry. Yep. Mortars continue to trade blows. A lot of shells on these things. They, they fire for a long time. We see an M4A3 support tank. Kind of surprised to see that coming in here instead of down here because he kind of like really needs it to clear out some of these machine guns and stuff like you could kill this and be pretty easy to get back into this flag some nuve i don't know how to say is it nueve no that sounds spanish to me nuve nuve i'm sorry i apologize my french watchers nuve i'm gonna go with nuve Nuev, I'm, I'm just going to keep changing it. <laughs> One of them will be right. Apologies again. We have a command in for Sir Daniel. So that could be a pretty big deal, but he's got to find... He doesn't have any leaders. They, okay, we have some char leaders coming in. Some stewards for the leading. Yeah, Kerning's looking a little light right now. He's definitely got less troops on the map. But he does have the Jumbo Wumbo up here, so that's definitely a kind of a bit of a brick wall there. P-51 coming in. He also has this P-51, so he, he has invested in some alternative things. Half-track does go down, gives him this flag back. Armor rifles are getting into the town. That's a big deal. This town's hard to hold, but he's just getting some troops in now. 
Mortar on his infantry, though. That's hurting. That's an owie. Uh, these Nova really are not CQC infantry at all. Mortar coming in. Nice hit there. Both players are two half-track mortars. Uh, Colonel Koenig forced out of the ta left town here at this point. Didn't really have the troops to hold it anyway. All right, Jumbo taking it. As long as he keeps his side armor covered, he should be very, very safe from this. He is finally moving the M10 up to, to help actually kill something. Here comes the problem moment, though, because the M10 is... The uh, Jumbo is going to get suppressed. There's a lot of M10s. Like, a lot of them. Along with the 57, he's got four units firing. M3A1 goes down. That's rough. Nueva, Nueva uh, pushed off here. Needs to clean out this sappers and recapture this flag, bring it back to at least parity here. Jumbo Wumbo did go down. Uh, when it was trying to s fall back, it turned its side armor. Down goes the M10 as well. This is really bad. That's a lot of losses all of a sudden. M3A1 forcing off the half track with its machine gun. Dies to the M4A3 here. First thing I thought it died to the 50 cal. I didn't see the, the thing actually fire. M4A3. Interesting. Okay. Anyway. Mortar looking for the sapper. Putting down a little bit of suppression on it. Now actually just suppressing the engineer just as much. This engineer is going to get... Well, no, they both get grenades off. The engineer doesn't get out. Sapper does. No, the engineer didn't get his grenades off. Interesting. Kerner being gradually forced out of this position again. And truthfully, again, with this map, all you got to do as blue players is just hold this flag and boom. There you go. 13-11. Keep parity everywhere else and grab a flag. Here comes a whole bunch of sappers. Yeah, the other odd choice with, I mean, both these divisions for this map is they really don't have 2K stuff. Um, but they just don't. They don't really have much. They have the, you know, the support Sherman. I think for both sides have the support Sherman. That's it. It's like they're only 2K asset. It's kind of odd when you have this big open area that's like heavily 2K. You know, like you want a tank right here. Tiger, Panther... Uh, T thirty four eighty five, IS two, any of those things, Firefly, any of those things would sit here at a nice two K and just cut this whole area off. So picking divisions that focus on fifteen hundred meter range and at most seventeen hundred fifty meter range is just kind of weird. Sappers are getting hit pretty hard by these eighty one mil that is eighty one mil mortar. The uh, Sherman support gun does find some hits. Mortar going after that M5 gun. Yeah, he definitely wants that. Already did some damage to the M10s. Uh-oh. Oh, M15 goes down. Gets spotted by the Recon Sherman. Ouch. Big loss. Not that there's been any air out of second Blinde, but they have it. He's just not using it. And it's just an expensive unit to lose for nothing. 19 minutes left here for Koenig on this current single tick that he, he cannot break. Here comes the M4A1 leader. I mean, at this range, it's a 90 mil, and it's 90 mil, so it should pen semi-consistently. The 76 will, of course, pen every shot. M5 gun spotting something. It does spot the transport here, takes it down. Nice kill there. Got to keep those infantry out. This half-track pushing forward for a cheeky flag grab. Jumbo Wumbo coming in. All right. Two tanks squaring off. Oh, Depression Hill. Hill Pression. We're just call it, we're going to call it Hill Pression. Okay? That's, I think we're going to call it that from now on. I'm tired of saying Depression and people telling, making jokes. Because it's not funny. Well, it isn't funny. But, I mean, I, I understand the joke is semi-funny. But it, it's not funny at the same time. So, we're now calling it Hill Pression. The Sherman was suffering from Hill Pression. Quoted. 
I'm happy to stand behind that one. I think that's relatively clever. All right, support gun hitting off these infantry. These infantry are kind of caught out right now, especially with the M5 here. Uh, M5 now seeing some M10s to shoot. But unfortunately, it does need to use its APCR at this range. He brought in a supply to keep that APCR firing. Support gun just blasting away here. This open target range. Do see some recon up north. It looked like Koenig tried to push in a little bit to the town, but kind of gave up. M5 gun getting hit again by the mortar. Got the command next to that mortar, giving it some extra fire uh, fire rate and aiming time. Armored rifles with the BAR do have a bazooka, so they should be able to kill this M10 half track, M5 half track very easily, or the jumbo. I mean, there's so many options. The engineer is not it though. I was kind of, there you go. About to say that is the only not option there. And again, Sir Daniels doesn't have to do much here. Because the flag is right next to his 50, all he had to do is get into this town and boom, he's got an advantage. And since Koenig did not... Oh, sorry. Since Koenig did not double down in his push up north, uh, this has kind of stagnated and allowed... has allowed Sir Daniels to really build up a nice force here. Takes out two infantry units. That's definitely not bad. Double P-51 strike, hitting hard. They got a lot of the infantry here. Both are trying, can't force them off in time. Our uh, mortars down south. Jumbo Wumbo in an odd position, to be honest with you. Especially moving the M3 half track in front of it. Not ideal. It will go down in this shot. There we go. Jumbo does spot that out. Up north. Sherman's take out the M1 gun. Gets a loader knockout on the jumbo. Wow. That's infuriating there for Koenig. He's trying to move forward to get the Sherman. It's at a weird spot. Uh oh. You don't want. This is not the unit you want finding it. The M5 may. Well, the side armor, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll pen that, but not from the front. The 76 has not moved up far enough. We're, we're seeing another problem of hill pressure here. He could just not kill this stinking Sherman. M10 on the opposite ridge, though. Oh, no, he's double teaming. Sir Daniel's setting up a nice double team, and the 76 goes down, killing nothing. Oh, rough. So rough. Another 76 goes down up north to the M10s. These M10s, we've seen a lot of M10s in these recent games, and, and they're really overperforming. God, when I use these things, they're like garbage, trash. They don't... And anything. It's like 130 millimeters of pen. They can't get a Stug to die. It's like infuriating. And yet we've been watching these games where these things are just chewing through armor. And I understand Shermans aren't like heavily armored, but we saw it in other games where they're penning all kinds of crap. Really surprising. All right, we do finally see some air power at a second blind day when we get to C phase here. Now both players with the maximum income. I have a feeling we'll see things turn on here, and here they come. Volunteers are coming in here. Sherman out in the open. There's nothing to kill it at this point. Jumbo Wumbo in a weird spot. Backing up. I would thought he might have pushed forward to try to actually get in range of the M10. It should have no chance of penetrating. P-51 has finally stopped before it can drop a bomb. M5A1 does get a nice kill on the half track, but there's nothing else here. M4A3 does have its heat shells. How much damage do those do? 10. So if it lands a hit and pens, it's an insta kill. Oh, it will not live though. But it does take a Sherman with it. M1 gun. Finding some chart. Nope. Decides to fall back. Does not commit to that combat. 15 9 now for Sir Daniels. Grabbing both these flags and the flag in the town here. Our first double tick of the game. There's another jumbo up north. Infantry looks like Colonel's moving some stuff into the north. M5A1 gets a pen on the M10. That was a nice hit there. Let's see if he can do it again. Wow, takes it out. Nice Stuart kill. Stuarts are nice little light tanks. There's nothing wrong with them. Sometimes they do just get wiped out though and don't do anything at all. 
find them to be a very high variance. Same with M10s. I don't know. M10, Stewards, both of those have, like, some games they look amazing, and other games they, they're just, like, such crap it's painful to watch. Smoke is down. I believe it's smoke for... Should be... I don't know, actually. Yeah, it's smoke from Koenig. So he throw down, threw down the smoke, and he doesn't really push forward with much. There's a bunch of Shermans here. Some SDK of Zeds, even. I mean, there's a lot here. I don't think he's getting through with his current point with, with his current troops. Jumbo stops the push. Command Stewart finding the regular Stewart. Both missing and or bouncing. Yeah, can't get a pen yet. Hold on. Oh, the leader gets the first. Gets hit first. Nope. The regular M5 bouncing. Is there a difference in armor here? Oh, there is. It's 45 versus 55. Oh, that's why the M5A1 was winning. I see, I see. Back to the 1311 here. The Jumbo in a nice position, although is now snuck up on by the M10. Gets side-shotted. Oh, no. And now bounces off the M10. I'm not sure how. Should be safe now, but it's not firing at anything. What's it doing? Oh, it got a loader knocked out. We can't see it because it keeps saying bounce, but the fact it's not reloading means it got a loader knockout. Oh, the the lucky, lucky crits here for Sir Daniel. Wow, is Kearney going to lose another jumbo to this? Finally falls it back. Nope, stops. No, he's going in. Gets a pen. I don't think he's going to make it to his second shot, though. I think he's going to get suppressed because these triple star M10s are just pouring out fire. Does get it. It will be... We will get uh, suppressed in this next shot, I believe. There it is, but immediately comes back. Finally fires. Misses, though. And that fallback should last a little longer. Stops again. It's going to get the shot off this time, though. Super suppressed, so it's missing. Oi, oi, oi. DB 77B with smoke. Um, okay. Do not see that unit every day. <laughs> there you go, folks. A beautiful line of smoke here for Sir Daniels. But, I mean, he just threw it down. I mean, his stuff's already here. Just what was the point? I mean, here he's just, he's trying to get in. Fine, okay. Argument made. Oh, they do have a chart M7. No, the 76 still doesn't pen the, uh, doesn't pen the jumbo at all. M10 bouncing a Sherman, sh uh, yeah, Sherman shell there. Surprising how many shells these Sherman, these M10s are bouncing, but finally it goes down. We finally see some positive trades here for Colonel Koenig, but he's only got seven minutes left. Here comes a regular DB-73 bomber. Say DB-3, I don't even know. It's so hard to read some of these numbers sometimes. Did it drop? I don't think I saw it drop anything. No, it did. P51 does not get through. Engineer's caught out. M10 dodges a shot. All right, Koenig is pushing forward in earnest now. M10 takes a penetration. Pressure's on a little bit here. 50 cals holding the line, but they are taking damage. M10 goes down, so a lot of dead M10s now. All of a sudden, Sir Dan's look a little armor light down south. His half track stuck up in the front line. 76 does take a penetration for that 57 mil. Up north, we zip back up here. Charge pushing some infantry out. Volunteers coming in. Armor rifles going into the woods along with an engineer. But Sir Daniels has locked up this, this town here now. Which 50 cal did go down. Armor moving in. M10 goes down. M4A3 support gun. Taking damage from the M10s. It does have more armor though in the front. It should be able to take some tank a little bit more. Can't do enough though. Goes down. P51 did get his bombs off and Koenig back into his southern town finally. DB coming in. Still on the 1311 though with, uh, with uh, Sir Daniels grabbing this flag. 
M5A1 trying to catch this M10, I believe. Doesn't get the shot off in time, though. That's rough. M1 gun bounces. DB73 coming in to kill the M1 gun. Is going to succeed, of course, and that flag may go over to Sir Daniels here. We'll see. I don't think it's going to get there. Well, maybe it will. It's moving pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Just another crap flag right there. Uh, Sherman going down to the M10. Another M10 dead, but one left. But a bunch of armor has died. Obviously, we saw a lot of Sir Daniels die, but now Koenigs is looking a little thin, too. Both of them aggressively trading Shermans. A uh, lot of M10s, though, from Sir Daniels. I think that's the right choice in this matchup because they penetrate Shermans far more consistently than Shermans penetrate Shermans. M10 going down up north. Has no chance against the Jumbo Wumbo, of course. And a big push coming in for another flag. Looking for the 15-9 here. Koenig on the back foot. Needs to turn it around some eye, but again, on that mirror income... It's not like Sir Daniels is, is desperate for points himself. How much does this cost? Only 60 points for the smoke bomber. Nice. He's just looking to cut all this off. Will he get in, t in, in time to save the 76? We'll see. Looks like he will. Yeah, he definitely will. Smoke down. Half track goes down. Koenig making some nice progress here. Armor Rifle does get the bazooka off on the mortar. Nice kill there. Now, but the problem is now he has four M10s and a... Well, three M10s and a char to get through. I'm not sure he's got the armor for that. The Jumbo Wumbo can definitely, you know, for lack of a better term, tank pretty well. But we saw it already get overwhelmed several times by this number of tanks. Uh, char goes down here. 76 char. Jumbos are proving to be problematic, but they're not changing the course of this game yet. Volunteers getting in. 76 goes down, so that was kind of a waste there. Sardanos so needs to keep doing what he's been doing and, uh, like, mass attacking with his tanks. 81 mil mortar in a very dangerous spot here. My god, that's ballsy. 59, only 50 seconds left here for... Colonel Koenig, he's got to capture a lot back to turn this around. He's this flag and this one. He loses another Sherman here. Yeah, needs to force off these volunteers so he can capture that flag and then needs his armored rifles to get into the center. I don't know. Well, he did capture a flag, so now he's got a minute and a half. Holding on for dear life by the fingernails at this point. Double Sherman here in a dangerous spot. He could push forward and try to surrender these. I'm sure he's afraid of getting side shot there. There goes the mortar. Yeah, that was weird. I think the I think the yeah bomber hit the uh, the tanks down here. Jumbo taking some damage. The bigger issue for it is it's suppressed already. Like it's starting out with a bunch of suppression. That's bad. How far back's he going? Only 15 seconds left now on the 59 again. Trying to make sure the jumbo does not show side armor here. How much side armor does this thing have? Not not a ton. More than normal, of course, but not a ton. DB73 coming in again. I have a feeling this would be able to kill it, but time is up here for Koenig. And game one of the finals goes to Sir Daniels. 31 minutes, 5 seconds here on Ciano. 2,200 kills to 3,110 kills. Nice match to both players. This map is crap. That's all I really have to say. I do think Sir Daniels played much better than Koenig in this game, but I also think the map kicked Koenig in the balls the whole time I just think it's just not a fair map um and again the game is asymmetrical no map is perfectly fair but some maps are just a little obnoxiously unfair and in my opinion with the flag placement Siano is one of those maps uh which is why I'm not a big fan of it in tournaments because it just feels like it's so heavily weighted to one side but I digress if you guys enjoyed that make sure to hit that like button subscribe and consider supporting on Patreon thanks a bunch and have a fantastic day